Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Android Authority. Now yesterday, we found out the name of the new Qualcomm processor, the Snapdragon 855. And today we have details of its internals. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So yesterday when Qualcomm revealed the Snapdragon 855, they told us a little bit about what the chip will be able to do. They talked about the performance increases in AI. They talked about the computer vision that's built into the image signal processor. And they talked a bit about 5G. Now today, we have all the details about the insides, including the CPU, the GPU, the uh, DSP, the image signal processor that they mentioned, the built-in LTE modem, and much more. So let's start with the CPU. So Qualcomm have gone for quite an interesting setup in this new Snapdragon processor. Normally we have an octa-core uh, processor, you might get four high performance cores and four energy efficient cores. But this time Qualcomm have gone with a one plus three plus four setup. So what does that mean? So first of all, this one core on its own is known as a prime core, and it has a higher clock speed than the other three high performance cores. In fact, this one reaches 2.84 gigahertz, and it's also got a larger amount of cache. And then beneath that, you've got three high performance cores, which are clocked up to 2.4 gigahertz. And then after that, you've got the four energy efficient cores, which are clocked at 1.8 gigahertz. And what this basically means is that when there is some single threaded tasks going on, then this one prime core can kick in, run quite quickly and with a lot of cash and get that job done as fast as possible. When there's more multi-threading going on, then join the other three cores to kind of give it that boost. And then you've also got the four energy efficient cores, which can be used in a multi-tasking setup. And of course are also there for when your phone is not doing very, very much. It's just you know, streaming music or something like that, then you don't even need to use those high efficiency cores. So this is one plus three plus four setup. And that should mean that it comes up with good uh, single threaded score performance uh, numbers. And also it should have good multitasking performance numbers. Now, next up is the GPU. In fact, Qualcomm like to round this off, calling it the uh, Adreno Visual Subsystems because it's actually more than just a GPU. Now, for the GPU, we've got the new Adreno 640. Now, the 640 is promising a 20% uh, increase compared to the GPU that we found in the Snapdragon 845, but it also adds a whole bunch of really interesting things, including support for Vulkan 1.1. We've got HDR gaming, so that gives you 10-bit color uh, in Rec 2020. There's physically based rendering. There's hardware accelerations for H.265 and for VP9. And there's hardware playback for HDR10, HDR10+, Plus, Dolby Vision, and much more. And also, because Qualcomm are keen to uh, promote this idea of XR, that's kind of, you know, the VR and all the other experiences you can get with it, virtual reality, then it can actually handle 8K 360 degree VR video playback. So one of the strengths of Qualcomm has always been the power of its GPU and the power of its visual subsystem. And that seems to be very much the strength that they're playing to here in the Snapdragon 855. One of the things that Qualcomm were keen to uh, underline yesterday was the fact that the image signal process, the ISP, will have computer vision built into the hardware. And that includes things like object tracking. And now actually they've given us more details about what we'll find in the Spectra uh, ISP. So we have the Spectra 380 uh, ISP and it supports dual 14-bit uh, computer vision assisted uh, image signal processing, which means it can handle 22 uh, megapixels at 30 frames a second in two cameras simultaneously or 48 uh, megapixels at 30 frames a second from a single camera. Then the hardware computer vision functions include things like object detection, uh, tracking, and of course, depth processing. And then on top of that, we've also here got uh, talk about what it can capture in terms of video capture. And now we have 4K at 60 frames a second in HDR10 and HDR10+, Plus, along with a bokeh in a portrait mode and along with a greater color gamut. 
So the 4K 60 frame a second HDR10 and HDR10 plus video capture is quite exciting because previously when you wanted to see HDR content on a HDR display, you would rely on services like Netflix or YouTube to be able to send over videos that have been recorded in that way. Now videos that you record with a Snapdragon 855 powered smartphone can record things in 10 bit color and then you can see that 10 bit color back when you play it back on your smartphone. So this really is a bump up in what we'll be able to do in terms of recording memories and activities with our friends and families. We can now record it in HDR 10 and 10 plus. But there's more to the Spectra 380 ISP as well, because it also includes electronic image stabilization. It also includes Heath photo capture and H265 video capture. And also it can do 480 frames a second slow-mo at 720p. I'm sure some people would have wanted it higher than 720p, but nonetheless, it is still a good uh, slow-mo capturing facility on the Snapdragon 855. Now, as you know, many mainstream processors now include a neural engine or a neural processing unit of some kind. And that's what you find in the Kirin. That's what you find in processors from Apple. And of course, Qualcomm will not be left behind in this area. And they have bumped up their ability to process neural networks on the new Hexagon DSP. So the Snapdragon 855 includes the Hexagon 690 processor. We found out yesterday that that has a significant performance increase compared to the Snapdragon 845. But what's important here to see is that they've added some more Hexagon vector extensions. And the first one of those allows it to do more neural networking associated stuff. That's the Hexagon Tensor Accelerator. And then we've also got the Hexagon Voice Assistant. And of course, that's to do with AI and machine learning. We have today speaking to our device is hearing back the voices and then there's the always aware technology which of course is good for listening for things like uh, keywords like you know hey Google as it would be in Google's thing or in uh, Alexa for Amazon so that you don't use up much battery life when you're listening out for those keywords. And while we're talking about the uh, AI engine, it is worth noting that Qualcomm do point out that it has a heterogeneous approach to the AI engine, which means it will farm out tasks to the DSP or to the GPU or to the CPU according to what it thinks is the best piece of hardware to handle that task and which piece of hardware can handle it in the most power efficient way. So as we found out yesterday, the 855 will not have a built-in 5G modem. It will use an external modem. When I say external, I mean external to the 855 processor, not something you hold in your hand, but something that will be on the circuit board next to the 855 processor. However, it will have built in a 4G LTE modem, in this case, the new X24 modem. Qualcomm are also keen to point out that this is not just about LTE and 5G. The 855 is Wi-Fi 6 ready, and there's a whole bunch of list of things here that is able to support in that whole Wi-Fi arena. And of course, there's Bluetooth 5 and of course, location services. And there you have it, the Snapdragon 855. So you've got the new Cryo CPU in that one plus three plus four setup. And Qualcomm are saying that can give you an up to 45% performance increase. And it'll be interesting to see when we get devices in our hands, whether it actually lives up to that promise. You've got the new Adreno GPU with a 20% performance increase. But then the really exciting stuff is in the AI engine and the computer vision uh, enabled ISP. Now, both of those play really well into the whole area of virtual reality and of course augmented reality and it'll be interesting to see the applications that will be developed for the Snapdragon 855 over the next few years. Now the whole processor is built on a seven nanometer uh, technology which of course is the same as the processors from Apple and from uh, Huawei. Okay, so that's just about it. I'd just like to say that I will be doing a performance analysis to see how this new processor fits in compared to the new Samsung, compared to the Apple A12, compared to the Kirin 980. Of course, it's only gonna be based on theoretical numbers at the moment because we don't have the devices. But if you're interested in that video, please make sure you're subscribed to the Gary Explains channel and then you'll know when I drop that video. Other than that, my name's Gary Sims. This is Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share this video on social media. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.